Hello, this is Dr. J, back with some more Let's Play Legend of Zelda, the third quest. It's time to enter level 6. What mysteries and dangers await us within? Sort of a bluish-gray motif this time. A dark room. Some bubbles and some zoles. Nothing too threatening, really. The bubbles are really just an annoyance. A lot of water in this dungeon. Could say perhaps maybe this is the water temple of the game. Which would make sense, since it's out there in the middle of the ocean. So even a little bit of an elemental theme going on here, which is kind of cool. Killing that Moldorm nets us some rupees. Yeah, I, I really, I had forgotten that this is the case. I, I really like how there's so much water in this, in, in the ocean dungeon. Makes a lot of sense, and... Very good theming. Another Dig Dogger. We know what to do about him. See if we can quickly finish off the little ones with some bomb action. Oops, I hit the wrong button, so that's not going to happen. Get over here. Got him. Pulse voices. You know, the pulse voices kind of make me think of the super killer death rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, they're probably not intended to be a reference to that or anything, but anytime you see a cute fox rabbit like monster that's actually really dangerous. I think it's fair to make that association. No holy hand grenades to be found in this game, though. But that's fine, because the ocarina one-shots them. It's even better than a holy hand grenade. Pretty obviously there's going to be a bombable wall up there. Yep. With an old man who tells us, aim at the eye of Goma. Well, I guess we know what the boss of this dungeon is going to be. Oh, and that's not a bombable wall. That's one you walk right through. So that's an illusory wall. Which is going to take us to the dungeon item, which is the magic wand. The magic wand is quite nice because it gives you probably the most viable ranged attack if you lose your sword beam. Because it hurts more... It hurts at most things more things than the boomerang, and it doesn't cost you rupees to fire it like the bow does. So quite nice. Uh, I don't remember if any of these walls is bombable or not. I don't think we need to worry about the one to the west. We can try the southern and the eastern ones. Nope. Might as well try the one to the west, even though even if it was bombable, it would just take us back somewhere we'd already been. But none of them were. Uh, that wall is clearly going to be bombable, though, so we need to backtrack north, west, and south, and then bomb the east wall. Also, note that this... I haven't been calling out the letters that the dungeons are shaped like. This one is an A. So what we've seen is ST period G-I-G-A, which spells Saint Giga, which, as I understand, was the television station that broadcast this game when it was back on the Satellaview. So that's why the dungeons spell those letters out. Of course, there's two dungeons left to go, and we've now spelled out the entire name, which means the last two dungeons are going to be something different. Okay. I'm just curious if... The east wall here was bombable. First, we'll 
take care of the pulse voices. A little annoying that the monsters in here respawned. Definitely don't want to get hit by the like likes because having to buy my magic shield over again would be irritating. Just for fun, let's use the magic wand on it a bit. Again, the original magic wand sound, which was the same as the original whiz rope sound, was much cooler than the new one, which sounds rather weak and pathetic. Nope. So that means we do indeed have to backtrack and use the key we got. Yes, I mean, I know it's a minor thing, and games nowadays do it all the time, but it's just so cool that this remake of the original Legend of Zelda, which is from the 1980s, has this... And of course, you know, the remake was like a decade later, roughly, but still, it's cool that we have this water elemental-themed dungeon. I think that's really cool. So, uh... I know a lot of people tend to hate water levels. Um, I actually often like them in RPG-type games. I mean, not necessarily in games like Super Mario. Those water levels do annoy me because of the swimming physics. But, um, like, for example, I liked the water temple in Ocarina of Time. A lot of people probably think I'm a complete lunatic for saying that, but... Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, so probably need to backtrack to the west, go south, and probably the locked door on the east wall there, if I were to guess. And I have just forgotten about it. Derping out. And that is indeed the case. Darn bubbles. Got my sword back. It really doesn't take long at all. Oh, jeez, the bubbles are irritating, though. Tons of pulls voices. They are no match for our ability to badly play the ocarina. Our playing is so bad it kills them with their oversized, hypersensitive ears. Take that. This wall better be bombable, or I'm going to be confused. Hitting the wrong button more than normal at the moment. Uh, there is another Zelda game that I have been playing for the Satellaview. I'm sure a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where I'm pretty sure the item and sword buttons are the reverse of what they are here. Which is why I'm getting really confused and can't get the map to my muscle memory properly. Lots of directions to go. We can go north, we can go south, we can go in that stairway. I don't remember which is correct, so we'll just take them one by one. Oh man, watch out. Don't let a like-like corner you. Got him. Okay, we obviously will have needed that key to proceed. Hmm. Was there not a way to go to the north? Did I just make that up? Oh, okay, it led to this. Got it, got it. There was a way to the north, but it was already explored because we had come to it from a different angle. That explains. Gotta trigger that trap and then enter the little stairway. Get wrecked, Keys. Kill a bunch of Gibdos. Let's pull out our magic wand and have some more fun with that. And getting the time stopper will trivialize this room. 
Man, this magic wand is powerful. I didn't realize it hit so hard. We have the last key, so this we already know is going to be Goma because of the old man's hint, and we have to pierce its eye with an arrow when it opens it. This looks really easy, and to people who play the game more than me, it is really easy, but I have a hard time hitting Goma's eye without getting hit by its stupid little eye bullets. And we got the sixth piece of the Traffles! In and out, very clean. Hardly took any damage. Apparently our boomerang is upgraded to its final form? I don't actually know exactly what that means. I mean, it certainly acts like it's more powerful. Okay, it is upgraded, all right. Can actually kill proper monsters now, all right. We've got a super duper boomerang. So now that we have cleared level six, we have a lot of ground to cover in the overworld. Some items to get and some secrets to see if we can uncover. Man, Boomerang is downright overpowered after that upgrade. It's pretty sweet. Link is collecting quite the arsenal at this point. Started off as an unarmed youth who drove away some of Ganon's minions with only his wits. Now he has wits magic and steel at his disposal, which is a good improvement over just wits. Ah, uh, jerk. Okay, so there's a bombable wall here, which I think leads to a shop. I'll try not to get hit by the annoying death mountain boulders, but I'm sure I will get hit by them. Uh, huh, was it not here? Maybe I'm just not hitting quite the right spot. There it is. Having to find a bombable wall while getting attacked by those boulders is quite irritating. Okay, we have a magic shield. We don't need that. You should never need to buy a key. You always find as many keys as you need in the dungeons. I don't remember if we require bait again or not, so I'm going to buy some just so that we don't get blindsided by that if we do end up needing it. I'm actually not sure how to get to that little island out there with the bomb on it, nor do I know if it's necessary, or I mean if there you get anything by doing so. I know for sure it's not necessary. Um, there is a bombable wall here, but it just leads to an old man who takes some of your money for destroying his non-existent door, so... No reason at all to uncover that secret. However, we very much are going to want the bombable wall here because it leads to what I believe is the last of the secret overworld heart containers. Then we go a little further to the west, enter this cave, and we find an old man who tells us life was blown into the Armos. If you come here and talk to him before you complete level six, he says it is lucky the Armos are still sleeping or something like that which means you're not going to be able to bring an armos to life and recover a plot critical item you do need to complete level six first now i'm sure you notice the little series of steps there which can only be traversed with oh i think probably all the armos will come to life now and none of them would before so this leads to this very interesting screen, which has no apparent way to reach it. I was able to reach it during my practice playthrough. I don't know exactly what you have to do to get there. I'm going to see if I am able to do the exact same thing and if it works again. Because it is definitely worth your time to go to that little secret cave there. Pretty sure that was added by the ROM hackers for... Uh, who converted the Satellaview version of this game to the third quest. I think they modified that screen to their own little secret. And this leads to another hidden rupee room. We are absolutely loaded. 
And now, if we follow this arrow back here, and bring the correct Armos statue to life... Oh, that one's real slow. Their speed is randomized. They're pretty dangerous when they're super fast. This gives us access to the power bracelet. Now we're going to be able to move rocks that we find around the, the overworld. Which is required in order to be able to complete the game and also leads to a variety of secrets. One such secret... We'll switch to the overpowered Super Boomerang, which can two-shot a Lionel. One of the Power Bracelet secrets is we can move that rock, and that leads to a warp point. So this warped us, if you look at the map in the upper left corner, from the northern Death Mountain area all the way to the southeast of this tiny little section of Hyrule. Because the world map here does not represent all of Hyrule by a long shot. As you learn in the Adventure of Link when you see a lot more of the world map and this is just a tiny fragment of it in the southwest. Okay, and then we move this rock. can do a quick 1-2 with the sword and the boomerang now, don't have to wait for the sword beam to recharge. If we go here to the west, this should look very familiar to Zelda 1 veterans. This of course is the entrance to dungeon... well I think it was the final dungeon in the original if I remember right, so dungeon 9. In this game it's dungeon 8. Which, again, is the final dungeon, so final dungeon in either case. We haven't done Dungeon 7 yet, so we're not going to do this one yet, but... Might as well bomb it and reveal the entrance, no reason not to. A lot of blue Lynels here, very dangerous screen. Oops. Meant to use the boomerang. Oh, I'm out of bombs. That could be problematic. Ah, oh, thanks for dropping those. And in this cave, we can buy medicine if we needed it, but we are full on medicine, so we don't. We can remember this is here, if we do need it later, though. Okay, so, uh, let's see, nope, a little farther. This screen, oh. Walked right into that Lionel. Man, that pea hat has it out for me. I cannot believe how overpowered this boomerang is after it gets its final upgrade. So down here, I think this led to a different... Uh, less significant secret in the Satellaview version of the game, though I'm not positive about that. But I think this was modified for this third quest ROM hack. And it's a red ocarina. It says the red ocarina signals a secret and brings far, which is unbelievably English and not very clear. One of the things it means is that now a chime will sound if we're on a map with a secret we haven't uncovered. And something else it does. So the last, when I did my practice playthrough, I used the Red Oak Arena immediately on this very screen right after I got it. And it took me to that otherwise unreachable secret cave. Okay, and it did so again. Perfect. Let's restore our bombs while we're here. And we go in here. And we see an old man and an old woman. You have found the magical key room by Trey and Khan. I think Trey and Khan uh, were the ROM hackers who made this. 
and we get the magical key, lion key, skeleton key, call it what you will. Uh, it has a lion head on the top of it. Basically, it's infinite keys. We never need keys anymore because we can open all locked doors. So that's pretty cool. Alright, I'm glad I was able to get that again. I don't know if maybe the first time you use the Red Oak Arena, it always takes you to this screen, or or if it always or if it only does so if you use it on that one I, one screen. I'm not really sure how it works. Uh, but we got it to work again, so that's what matters. Okay, uh, so I don't think we're done getting secrets yet. So I'm going to use the Oak Arena again, and I want to backtrack to level 3. I'm not sure if uh, these secrets are accessible yet, but I'm going to give it a try. What level is this? Level 5, I think? So I think this will take me to level 4, yes. And then one more while facing left should take me to level 3, because if you're facing left when you use it, you go backwards through the dungeons you've cleared. Perfect. And now west from here... And then north... Uh, I think I actually wanted to go... This north, and then east. And now that the Armo statues have awakened... Oh, that's a fast one. He's, he's coming for me. Got him. It will uncover a secret. The red ring. This is incredible. The blue ring cut our damage that we take in half. The red ring cuts it in half again, so now we take one quarter damage, and our tunic becomes a snazzy red color. So between all the heart containers we've got being full on medicine and having the red ring, we're basically immortal at this point. You'd really have to work to get killed by damage once you've got all this stuff. Let's see, anything else I want to get? I'm pretty sure I still can't get the Master Sword. I think you have to clear level 7 before then. Uh, so... I think the fastest way to... get back to where we want to be... will be to warp to level 2. This should take us... to level 2, and it did. And... Oh, uh, so that was the Chime of the Red Oak Arena telling us that there's a secret here we missed. And indeed, I think that there's a bombable wall here I forgot about. But it just leads to a medicine shop. Since we're full on medicine, we didn't really need this anyway. But honestly, the secrets feel a lot more fair when there's a chime that tells you that there's a secret on a screen. So even if you don't know where it is, at least you would know that there is for sure a secret on that screen, and so you would know that you're not wasting your time bombing walls or burning bushes. But as I mentioned already, that particular bombable wall is just an old man who takes your money, so ignore that one. And we are having to backtrack quite a bit, but the red getting the red ring was absolutely worth it. Uh, the secret on this screen is another old man who just takes your rupees. And this one. There are a lot of such screens here in Death Mountain. I still don't quite understand, because it's not as if you've destroyed an actual door. So, I don't know what you're even paying to repair. But... Whatever, don't want to overanalyze things. I should probably switch to the boomerang so I can go back to that lethal 1-2 shot. Mm. 
Very nice. You still can't do it too quickly in succession, or you'll just hit the enemy during their invincibility frames and end up not doing any damage. So there is a secret that we do want to uncover. It is a shop, but I don't think that we need any of this. We have the magic shield, we'll never, I mean, you never need to buy keys from shops, but we will definitely never need keys again because we have the skeleton key and we already got bait. Uh, and this is another secret you do want to uncover. It is another, and I believe the last secret rupee room. And now, at long last, we reach level 7, which has a nice creepy, almost sort of cyclopean eye over its entrance, as well as uh, a bunch of graves. Oh, and I'm down half a heart, which means I don't have my sword beam, that's irritating. Uh, but anyway, probably shouldn't actually summon those Poes. So, next time we will enter the penultimate dungeon of The Legend of Zelda Third Quest, level 7. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I will see you then. Bye!